part because there's a lot of there's a lot of um, um, a lot of Gemara to cover today. Um, we our daf today here is daf Tezayin, okay, and we're going to start by Ezra Hashem on daf Tezvav Amid Beis. And the beginning of the and the beginning of the uh, the commentary that we're, we're middle of the commentary somewhere t- towards the bottom third of the daf tezvav and mebeis here we go hi Alan we, we're just starting hi good evening. okay we're on daf tezvav and mebeis um, today's daf is daf tezayin we're starting from the last third uh, the Gemara begins yovoi hamelech v'haman. Okay, let's just wait for a second. Okay. Yavai Hamelech Vahaman. El Hamishta. The Gemara is Darshning, the Vaita Darshning, the Psukim of the Megillah Sesta. Tonar Abonan. So the Gemara is basically asking two questions over here. Why did Haman, why did Esther decide to bring down Haman through a party? And the other thing is, if she is making a party, why just invite Haman? invite all the other uh, ministers to the party because it's so boring to have just one person at a party. So the Gemara is going to answer that with, with a bunch of opinions, but it's not going to answer both questions. Turn around, Bonner. Ma ro'ase Esther, shizimna es haman. What did Esther, th- what was Esther thinking inviting Haman to a party? It's your arch enemy. So Rab Lazar, pachem tam noloi, she set a stumbling block for him. When they're at a party, there's always something bad happens. And that's always the case because when the Goyim party, I like New Year's, there's always some uh, some event that uh, blows the whole thing. So she was hoping that something is going to trip up and something bad will happen. Nachashverish will turn against Hama. Rabbi Yeshua, Aime, Rabbi Yeshua says, Mi base lambda. She learned it from her father's house. That means that there's an expression that you, you keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer. That's the shnema im ra'av sanach. If, hung, if your enemy is hungry, hachilehu lech and bring him bread. So she learned in her father that uh, that have Haman near you uh, as much as you can. Rashi says she didn't learn it from her father. She shama mehatinoikis oimim came. Apparently, obviously Esther did not have a father. So she overheard the yeshiva students uh, uh, say this pasuk. Those days, the yeshivas were learning naf, navi. Rameya says the reason why she wanted Haman right there next to Achashverish, Kedesh Layital Eitz of Yimrit. Haman should not rebel against Achashverish and take over the whole kingdom. He had that kind of uh, power and, and, and prestige. Uh, so, therefore, might as well still, it's better to still have Achashverish as the king. Rabbi Huda says, Kedesh Loy Yakir Boshi Yudis. She didn't want Haman to have any inkling that she's a Jew. So she's inviting him to a party. So that shows that she's not on, uh, she, she's definitely not, um, not a Jewish person. Rab Nechemia says the most famous reason. Rab Nechemia says the reason why she made this party is Kedesh Yom Yisrael, so the Jewish people should not say. Um, we have a sister in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the kingdom. In other words, here we go, sorry. We have we have a sister in the in the in the palace. We see she died to Menachem, and people stop praying because they have a we have somebody there. It's going to all work out in the best. Wait a second, this 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 uh, our friend is befriending the enemy. Rabbi Yosi Oime Kedeshe Motzu Lo Becholish. She wanted Achashvera uh, to be to her at all times, and therefore Achashvera will get uh, angry at him that he's, you know, coveting his wife. And that's the reason why she did it. Rabbi Shimon ben Manasi, Rabbi Shimon Seasi says, Ule yargish He says that the reason is that maybe God will see that, um, that Esther is flattering up to Haman and lowering herself to Haman. That will show that uh, some, uh, that will move God to say, hey, this, wait a second, Esther the Tzedekis is now cowing up uh, to Haman. That will move Hashem when uh, when when people of high stature are are flattering up to a Russia. Rabbi Shua ben Karcha Amar, Rabbi Shua ben Karcha said, "As bilay ponen today she yaharek huvehi." Rabbi Shua ben Karcha said that I'm going to show Haman that I like him, so that Achashverosh should get angry at both of us and kill us both. And she was like giving her life up, so to speak, 
so that uh, Ahasuerus should kill out not only Haman, but also Esther. And that's the reason why she did it. It would be an excuse for Ahasuerus to kill both of them. Rabbi Gamliel Melech Hapapachon Hoya. He was a, a, a flip-flop type of king. In other words, if Esther would have convinced Ahasuerus that you're supposed to kill Haman, so she wanted Haman right there so that Haman should get killed and not that Ahasuerus should have any time to think about because uh, he had a, he he has a way about him, Achashverosh, that he flips flops and then he may change his mind. So he had to have Ahash, uh, Haman right there. Amar Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Gamliel says all these terutzim only answer one question: Why Esther thought about using a party to bring Haman there, but why didn't she invite other ministers there? We still need what Rabbi Leza Hamaidoi said. That the reason is that Tanya, we learned in a Braisa, Rabbi Leza Hamaidoi Oime, Kinatu Ba Melech Kinatu Ba Sorem. She wanted not only that the king should be jealous, that uh, Esther's hanging around Haman, and Haman equates the king to, to, to the king, but also all the other governors, who, ministers who were not invited. You see, it's, it's not only who you invite to the party, but it's who you don't invite to the party would be jealous of Haman. And therefore, he, she, she aroused the jealous of everyone around Haman's uh, circle of friends. Rabbi Rabbi Amar Rabbi says the reason why she made this party is that's the ultimate. Lefnei Shever, before you break uh, somebody down, Ga'oin, they have the highest pride. So she had to raise him up even further than he was. Abaya Verova Damri Tavaya, Abaya Verova both says, Bechumim, Oshis Es Mishtem. When they're hot, I make something bad happens during their parties. In other words, not only uh, did, Ach, did Esther want Haman to trip up at a party, but also Ahasuerus should trip up at a party. Maybe she wanted both of them to get at each other's throat and kill each other. Ashkeche Rabba Baravu El Elio. Rabba Baravu found Elio Hanavi somewhere. Amale, he says, Keman Chazia Esther Bahavchahachi. What's the real reason why Esther made a party? We just gave you about a, a half a dozen reasons of why Esther made a party. What's the real one? According to all Tanoim and all Amaroim, all the reasons are correct. And in Shemayim, that's how they learned uh, the Megillus Esther. Then we learned in the Pasik, Haman was retelling his wealth and how many children he has. In with uh, and, and you know he needed to lift his spirits when he when, when he found out Mordechai is not bowing down to him, so that he says I have many children. The Kama Roiv Bonav. How many children did, did Haman have? Amarav Lamed. He had thirty children. Asora Mesu ten died, which we know in the Megillah Sastra. Asora Udan uh, died. We don't know who they were. Asora Nitlu and ten got hung. Asora Machzir and Al Psachim, and and ten of them are actually became poor. And they're now uh, collecting money. Those that are collecting, those that became four, Shivin Habe. Even though he was the wealthiest person in the world, but his own children he didn't support. Or he denied that they were his children. You know, you can compare him to Steve Jobs, who had children out of wedlock, and he denied it's his child and never supported him. So they were living in a homeless shelter, his, his wife. Uh, so same thing. Haman had relations with many people and many people had children with Haman, but they're being raised by somebody else. And he denied that they're his children. So despite being wealthy, the, his, his children, his biological children were machzerops, collecting alms uh, like a poor person. And some say there were 70 children like that. There were 70. The Rami Bar Abba, Rabbi Bar Amma says, Kulam Musaim Ushmainahava. There was actually, Haman had 208 children. Shinama, Veroi Bonov, and Veroi, the gematria of the word Veroi, Reish Vav Beis, is the gematria of Masayim. So Gemara's question is, Veroi, the, the Vav Reish Vav Beis, is the gematria of Masayim Rabbeis, is actually 214. How do you say it's 208? It says the roiv, the word roiv is without the vav, and therefore it's actually 208. Then the pasta continues. The king's sleep was disturbed twice fold. What does it mean it was disturbed twice? God's sleep, so to speak, was uh, stirred. 
and therefore it's not only Achashverosh, but Hashem himself. Rabbanon Amru, not to do El Yoinim, not to do Tachtoinim. The Malochim were stirred to do something to keep Achashverosh awake that night. So it was somehow Malochim came down from heaven and started shaking Achashverosh, calling him somebody who denies, who has ungratitude to people who saved his life. Rava Amma, Shnas HaMelech Amma Achashverosh Mamish. It was actually the sleep of Achashverosh himself. What does that mean? He kept turning with the same thing over and over again. One statement kept hitting his head. He kept wondering, why does Esther inviting Haman to a party? And now there's another party the next night. Maybe they're planning a assassination attempt against this person, meaning himself, to kill him. So they may be Haman and Esther are trying to uh, uh, start a coup. Hada Omar, he said, if this was so, he twisted and torn. That's the nodada, back and forth. Wouldn't I have one good friend who would be aware of the plan that would notify me? Hada Omar, then he said to himself, maybe I do have a friend, but I didn't show him uh, gratitude when he did save my life. Maybe there is a friend I didn't pay him appropriately. People hold back and don't reveal uh, an assassination attempt to my life because I don't pay them a good reward. Yad, right away, he said, Please bring me the my uh, royal biography, royal diary. And the Pasuk says, and it became red. It's, it should say, what it should say is that they started reading it to him. Not that it became red. What this means is that it started, for some reason, a voice came out like an electronic reader, and it started reading by itself. And it, and it was found that they, it, was, it, it was found writing. Now, what should it say? It was found in the book, a written statement, not somebody writing it right now. So Malamed, this comes to teach you. Let's go to Tezayin Amar Aleph. Shishimshi, Shishimshi, which was one of the sons of Haman, who was actually the, uh, the king's scribe, Moichek, he was erasing this story from the book. The Gavriel Koisev, and Gavriel Malach came back and had to rewrite the story. So therefore, it's being written right now as in as, the uh, middle of the night when Akashveris is asking to it for it to be read. Amar Abiyasi, Rabasi said, Just like a story on, on this world, on, on, on earth, that speaks of the merits of a Jew is not erased. Right, because it's the, the Shimshi tried to erase it, and Gabriel was rewriting it. Ksav Shalamala, a statement that you write in the book above there. If there's a merit written in your name up in the upstairs book, Loy Koshkin, certainly it'll never get erased. In other words, one would think that if you do an Avera and you have a you did a mitzvah, so the Avera should cause your mitzvah to be erased. So your merits are erased based on the Averas that you do. That's that's not true. All that's written upstairs, especially merits, are never, ever erased. Then the Pasuk says, they told uh, Achashverosh that for Mordechai, loy nasi imoy dover. nothing was done for him. Imoy means him. They didn't even want to send, say his name. The people who were reading the book, so to speak, uh, were saying uh, uh, nothing was done, or they didn't even say yakaru gudula. They, they, they didn't just say anything. Amarava loy mipnei aven. As Mardukai, the, the scribes didn't love Mardukai, and they, that's why they answered nothing was done for him. as Haman, they hated Haman, so they didn't want that nothing should be done for him. They wanted something to be done for him, but they, they didn't mean that the greatest honor should be given to Mardukai. Hechin loy. So the Pasuk says that Haman came and wanted to tell him about the tree in the middle of the night that he prepared for him. Tana, we learned to the Brisa, loy heichin, that he peer, prepared it for himself. In other words, when Haman was making this tree, he actually tried it out on himself. 
So from here, and then, and, and that was in, ended up to be the tree that Haman got hung from. So you have to be careful when you, when you make a motion, especially a negative emotion against yourself. And it's like a, a sort of like Al-Tiftach Pel satan So, Vasei Kein Lamarcha Yehudi. So again, the, 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 the Megillah says, do what you just said to Mordechai the Jew. Amalei Mani Mordechai. So you, Haman said, what do you, what, which Mordechai should I, you know, do all this honor for? Amalei, so Achishrei says, Ha Yehudi the Jew. Amalei Tuva Mordechai Ikebi Yodai. Mordechai is a common name, and there are many Mordechais amongst the Jewish people. It's like Yoeli. So Amma lay, so Hachshver spelled it out for him. I want for that Jew that's a Yoisha Bishar Hamelach, that, that has a seat in the courtyard of the king. In other words, he's part of the government. Amma lay, so Haman got said, Sagi lay Bechad Diskarta, give him one village, or make a street named after him. Inami Bechad Nahara, give him one uh, a river passing so he could collect taxes. That should be enough for him. I, why should I do all that? Amma lay, Hod Name Havli, give him that as well. And also, everything that you said, put him on the royal clothing, the, the day that I was coronated, and ride him around the whole city with the horse that I rode on when I became king. Don't let anything fall from anything that you spoke. Don't leave out anything. So the post says, because basically, the reason why he gave both is because if, if uh, Mordechai would you know get all this honor and then a day later he goes back to his you know home it's it's not a covet for the king so it's best that you make him rich as well and then give him this honor so when he goes back he's going back to a nice place so that's why I give him a, a village and give him a a, a river to, that was that he could call his own anyway Haman took the royal garb of Ahasuerus and the horse he saw that Mordechai that, um, was learning with the boys and he was teaching them Hilchas Kemitsa because that was the, the, it was the first day of Chalamoid Pesach and he was teaching them how do they do a Kemitsa on a Mincha, which is, you know, you take the three fingers and you, and you, and you, you, you rub the top and the bottom and you do like this. So he was showing them how to do a kmitza because that day normally you would bring the mincha sa'imer. So that's what the sugi that they were learning. Since Mordechai saw Haman approaching, and he's holding a horse in his hand, Mirtas, he got scared because uh, that usually was a bad sign. It was almost like the SS is coming. You know, they used to. Uh, hang on a horse uh, in the in the ghetto. So anyway, so he saw a horse coming with Haman near it. So Mordechai got very very scared. hi He's coming to kill me. Everybody go from here. You should not burn from his coal. Then at that moment, Mordechai wrapped himself in a talus. and started to daven. Also, Haman Haman said, came, he stood in front of Mordechai, probably to disturb his davening, and waited till Mordechai finished the prayer. After Mordechai finished davening, Haman asked him, what were you busy with learning with the students here? I saw you. So he told Haman, when we had a base in Middash, when a person who, when the base of Midrash was around, if a person wanted to donate a mincha, he would bring a basket full of, uh, of, of fine flour. And through that, through the kamitsa, they would get a kapara. Amaluhu, so which is basically a fistful. Amaluhu, asa malai kumtsa kim chadidi, your fistful of flour is so much more important, vidachi asura alfa kikri kasbididi, that pushes away and overrides the $10 billion of mine. In other words, I tried to buy the Jews out, and 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 uh, now they should be under my jurisdiction. And your little learning over here overrides what I paid for you. Amale, so Marche said, Russia, you evil person, your money really is my money, as we learned yesterday. Haman was really a slave for, for Marche. Eved Shekana, Nechassim, a slave that owns possessions. Eved Lemi, Nechassim Lemi, who does the slave belong to? Who does the possessions belong to? So it's really not your money. Amalei, 
So Haman said, Kum levash hanimani, go put on these clothing, ride this horse, the boy Allah Malka, because the king wants you. Amale, he said, Marche says, I cannot put on these clothing because I'm, I, I'm fasting and I smell, I didn't shower, I need to go to the bathhouse and take a haircut. It's not proper for me to, uh, to use the, the royal clothing and in, in such a, in, when, I'm, when I'm not ready for it. Shadarti Esther, Esther sent a message in the meantime, they closed all the bathhouses in the city, into all the barbershops were closed. They gave it a legal holiday. He brought Mordechai into a private bathhouse, undressed him, uh, and, and bent him down, and he, he brought a pair of scissors from his own house. They call Shokel Bay Mazia, and he took this, and he took the 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 hair, the he took he took the scissors, and started giving him a haircut. Bahade the call Shokel Le Ingad Veisnach. He as he was giving Mordechai a haircut, he bent over and gave a, a sigh because he realized that you know Haman was was the wealthiest human on the on the planet, the most powerful human on the planet, and now he's made to give somebody a haircut. Amalei, so Mordechai asked him, "Am I Why are you sighing?" Amalei, Gavre da have a Malkin bekula Rav Navia. I am the most important person by the king from all the ministers. Hastu the Shavi Belani v'Sapar. Now I'm, I'm reduced to a a somebody who takes care of a bathhouse and a barber. Amalei, so Mordechai answered him, "Russia, the love Sapar shall kavar kartsim hayisa. Weren't you a?" Once, once you one time a barber in Kartsum, the name of the place was Kartsum. In other words, before you were known anything like that, you were, you were, you anyway were a barber for many years. So this is you're going back to your old profession. Tano, we learned, and that probably added to the prestige of Haman because he went from rags to riches, and that gave him, you know, people you viewed him as a deity. So. Tana, we learned in Abraisa, Haman Shapa Shakabar Katsum Hoya, Esrum Shtaim Shona. For 22 years, he was a barber of Kfar Kartsum. I, I'm I wonder about this number 22, which appears uh, by Yaakov and Yosef. This must be something with this number 22. Bosa de Shaklini Lamazia. After he, he finished taking a bath and taking the haircut, Love Shinu Lamani, he put on the clothing. Amale Sak Ruchav. Get up and get onto the horse. Amalei, so Rab Mordechai said, "Lo I can't get on this horse. I fasted too much and my body is very weak. Gochen, so Haman bent down, Uslake, and Mordechai stepped on Haman to get onto the horse. Kiselake, as he stepped on Haman, Ba'at Bay, he gave Haman a kick. Amalei, so Haman got uh, disturbed. Like Siv Lechul Benefoil Ayifcha Al Tismach. Doesn't it say somewhere in the Bible, when your enemies fall, don't be happy? Amalei, so Mordechai answers, Hanimeli be Israel. If it's a Jewish enemy, don't be happy. but you, Ksiv Alto, you will be able to stand tall and trample on their high places. My thinking is that Hama, Mordechai really wanted to get Haman angry, so Haman should kill Mordechai. And if Haman would kill Mordechai, then Haman would get killed. Because, because he's killing somebody that the king wants to honor, and, and right then and there he kills him. So that was the idea of Mordechai taunting Haman to get Haman angry to pull a gun on him. And once Mordechai would give up, would give up his life, get killed, then Haman would be killed, and the whole the whole edict will be over. But Haman was screaming out in the stream, this is what should be done to a man that the king wants to honor. When he was going on the street where Haman lived, the daughter saw who was standing on the roof, the one that's on the horse, who is the father. And the one that's leading the horse is Mordechai. She took the basin of the re- of the restroom, right, and the, the the basin which had all the human waste, and threw it onto her father's head, and then she lifted her eyes and saw it was her father. 
she went and jumped and committed suicide and died. It says in the Pasuk, Mardchai al Shara Melech, Mardchai returned to the courtyard of the king. Now, this doesn't mean he returned to the courtyard of the king. We just learned that Mardchai was teaching in yeshiva. So what does it mean after this story, Mardchai went back to the courtyard of the king? He went back to putting on a sack and fasting in front in public where he used to be in the, in the courtyard of the king. Haman was pushed to his home, Avil, a mourner, because he lost his daughter. And his head was covered. His head was in shame or covered with, with human waste on what happened to him. Haman told over the story of what happened that he was forced to give honor to Mordechai. And it says to all his lovers. And then they started saying to him, that don't start up. You got to give this, give up the gig. First, the pastor calls them, they're his lovers. But when they're giving him advice, they're calling him his advisors, smart ones. Um, Rabbi Yechen, Rabbi Yechen says, If you say something intelligent, even if you're a guy, you're still called a chacham. So they were giving him sound advice. They told him, If Mordechai is a Jew, they told him like this, If Mordechai is from any other Shevet, then you might be able to win this. The Imi Shevet Yehuda Binyamin Fray Menash. If he's one from these any of the Shvatim, he came from Binyamin. If he's from Yeshevet Yehuda Binyamin Fray Menash, Lo Yechatle, you won't be able to win this. Yehuda Bixiv. It says in the pasuk Yotcha Ba'erif Evecha. Inech Bixiv Lefnei Fray Binyamin Menash Ayres Gurasecha. So these are psukim that describe how you can't overpower Shevet Yehuda Binyamin Fray Menash. And they told him, "Give up the gid." If you're going to really fall down, what do you mean? No foil tipoil. They gave him the advice. Our nation, the Jewish people, are either dirt or stars. Kishen Yardim, when we're forced down, Yardim ad offer, we go down to the earth. Ukshen Oilem, when we rise up, Oilem ad lekachamim, we go up to the stars. So if Mordechai is going to go up, he's going to go way up. And you're going to be forced way down. So it's a double fall for you. Him going up and you falling down, going in the other direction. By the having a conversation, the Sarisia Melachigia Bavilu, they started, the, the officers of the king came and they started rushing Haman in panic. They brought him in panic because he didn't even have time to wash off the human waste that was on his head. Then Esther said, he, she's revealing herself and she says, this, this oppressor is not worth what he does in good. When you compare that, what he damages, what he causes damage for the king. Omruloi, she sold Achashverosh, Tsar this oppressor, is not worth in the damage that he caused to the king. He caused you to get jealous in Vashti. He incited you. Uktala, you killed Vashti. Hashti Kanabi Didi, now he's he's jealous against me, inciting you against me. he wants to kill me. So Vayoma Melech Hashver is Vayoma Esther Malkin. It says Vayoma twice. Vayoma Vayoma Lomeli. Why did it have to say twice? Hashver is talking. Amar Ababo, Ababo explained. Betchila Ayedei Maturgamim. All this time when Esther spoke to Hashverish, there was an interpreter because Hashverish had no idea that she was a, a master of languages. But Kevin the Amr Lake, since she revealed herself, she comes from a royal family and she's familiar with many, many languages because she comes from a kingly, kingly family. But yeah, then Esther Malka, she, he started conversing with Esther Malka, pushing aside the interpreter. So then the part revealed who is the oppressor. This Haman is the oppressor and the enemy. Why did she say Hazed? This Haman. Omar Abu Lazar, Malamit Shahoisa Mechava Kapi Achshverish, Uvo Maila Vesotu Yadal Kapi Haman. Fascinating. She was saying this bad individual, this oppressor, this no. And she actually did not want to point to Achshverish. She wanted to point to Haman to, to emphasize her, her statements. 
And in the end, she pointed to Achashverosh by accident. And Amalek had to push it and, and say, no, no, not this one, this one, Haman. Sometimes the thing that you focus on that you don't want to do, you end up doing. The, the king took a walk in the, in the, in the royal garden and, and, and the royal garden, and then he came back. His returning is coming back. When he first took the walk in the garden, he was full of rage. When he was returning from the garden, you would think he, he relaxed his mind to think things over. He was still full of rage. Why? Because he went to a garden, he went through to a walk in his royal garden. The Az of Ashkech Malcheshar is the Damele Kagabri. He saw Malacheshars that appeared like people, but called Akri Ilani de Bistani. They were uprooting the trees in this beautiful garden. The Amalahus Achashveris, who was taking a walk, my Uvdaich, what are you doing? Amale to Paktina Homan. Homan told us to uproot these trees. So he was so angry. Asla Basi, he went back to his palace. The Homan Noifel Almita. Homan was falling on the bed that Esther. There was no he fell not only by lay he fell he was falling on the bed he fell he kept falling and he wanted to get up and somehow it was he was pushed back down by an angel Omar, buy me base. I have it's terrible in my house. Buy me boron. It's terrible outside. When I go outside to my garden, everything all the trees are being chopped down. My boys, does it? You also want to take advantage of my queen while I'm still here in the palace? It looks like you want you want, you're raping her. Rachavoina said, "Who is this Chavoina?" He was telling telling Achashverosh that there is a big tree out there. This Chavoina was also an evil person and was part of the planning of hanging Mordechai. Kevin Shira, he turned, he was a turncoat. Kevin Shira, since he saw that the Haman's plan was falling through, the Yad Barach, he, he, he ran to the other side. He throws it down. has no mercy. He throws everything down from his hands. He runs to the other side. Even a Russia, his best friends, when they see that his plans are not working, they right away run to the other side to, to help out. So they hung Haman on the tree. The Hamas the king's rage, Shachacha, calm down. And Shachacha is a plural word. Plural word. There was two calmings over here. Lama. Achas Machashal Oilam. The royal, the king of the world, which is Hashem's uh, rage, calmed down against the Jewish people. He forgave them. And Achashverus rage also calmed down. But Amri Law and others say, they're both referring to Achashverus's rage. He was angry that he, he lost Vashti and he was always uh, in a bad mood because of Vashti got killed. And as we learned before, she was one of the most beautiful women in the world. And Achasha Esther, and then she was calmed down that this Haman wanted to kill his second wife, Esther. Then the Mora Darshans, a Pasuk in Parshas uh, uh, in, uh, in Bayigash, but it relates to the story of Mordechai and Esther. The Pasuk says, Everybody got five changes of clothing, and everybody got one change of clothing, and Binyamin got five. So when that was the time when Yosef revealed himself to his brothers and they were making up and he, he, he gave five changes of clothing to Binyamin over one change of clothing to the brothers. So after Davish and Staya by Isid Sadek, we go to Alma Bay's, you call Shabai. The whole story of the of, of jealousy was the stumbling block of what made them sell Yosef. And now Yosef is bringing out a favoritism to his brother Binyamin over the rest of the brothers. Why did he give him five clothing? The Omarava Bar Machasya Omarav Khama Baguria Omarav Bishvil Mishkal Shne Sloyim Melas because of something so light that weighs like two quarters of, of wool. Shahisiv Yaakov the Yosef the Yaakov added to Yosef Mishar Echov he gave him a nice coat or a nice shirt that weighed very little because the jealousy this galgala dov yard of Mitzrayim that's why he went down to Mitzrayim in such a manner. Maybe we wouldn't have gone down to Mitzrayim uh, in, in, in that way, or it would have been much easier. So the whole thing is, is because of bringing out jealousy, one brother over the next. So how could Yosef do the same thing by giving his brother Binyamin something more than he gave the other brothers? 
Amar Rabin Yaman by Yafis. This is by Yaman by Yafis. It's interesting, Tanai. First of all, his name is Binyamin, and he's coming to answer why Binyamin gets more. And Yafis is another odd name. Yafis is, is, is a name of Noyach's kids. My father had the name Yafis. We don't see that. Remez, Ramaz Loisha, also by Ben Lotzus Memeno. There was a Remez. He gave him five clothing, but those five were equal to the value of each clothing that the brother got. So let's say each suit that the brother got was worth $1,000. Binyamin got five clothing, but total value of those five was the same value of that one of the one thing that he gave each brother. And that was a remez of five of, of Mordechai, who's going to come out before the king. So the part of the Pesach describes that Mordechai wore five royal clothing when he left the house, the palace of the king. I want to point out to you that uh, the Pesach, the Pesach says over here, um, there's a Pesach over here, I'm sorry. Um, the Pesach from the Gra, it's Kedai to see this. The, the Pesach really says, the Chulam Nasan Ish Khalifos Somalois, for every brother got a change of clothing, and the Biyom and Nasan, he gave him $300, uh, which probably was to pay back for the embarrassment that he caused, but then he gave him five changings of clothing. I point out to you that the word is when it refers to the brothers, is spelled with a vav. That means, and the one, when the five that were given to Binyamin was spelled without a vav. So the five was worth less than the ones he gave, than the ones he gave uh, uh, the other brothers. Anyway, the Pesach continues, So he, he fell on the necks of the brothers. Why did he fall on the necks? Binyamin, he, he started crying because he saw that Mitzrayim is not going to be the only Golas. In fact, although we were supposed to be 400 years of Mitzrayim, we probably couldn't make it 400 years, so the other Golas were spread out. So he saw a, a vision, Yosef, that there's going to be two base Amigdash going to be destroyed, which were built in the in the Chalik of Binyamin. Binyamin cried on his neck, the Mishkan Shiloh was also destroyed. That was going to be in the in the part of Eretz Yisrael that belonged to Yosef, and that was also destroyed. Then he said, by divulging to his brothers, he said, "Don't you see?" And my my brother's eyes sees. Binyamin sees. Amr Ablaza, Ablaza said, Amalehem, Yosef told his brother, Kishem Shem Belibi al Binyamin Achi, I have no qualms against my brother or my Binyamin, my brother. He wasn't involved in selling me. Shlahoi be Michirasi, Kach, Ain Belibi Alechem, I have no, I have, I'm really Michael, you, I have nothing in my heart against you. Kifi Amadaber Alechem, Kifi is one word, Kain Libi. Like whatever is my heart, that's what's coming out in my mouth. I'm not faking it over here. Then the Gemara continues. The Esser might he gave uh, he gave ten donkeys to his father as a gift, carrying what the best Mitzrayim has to offer. My Mitzvah Mitzrayim. What was Yosef sending to his father? Amar Ab Yamin Bayafis again. Ben Yamin Bayafis. Amar Ab Loza. Shalach Loi. He sent the present for his father. Yain Yashan. Old wine. Shadas the Kenim Noicha Menu. Because when uh, men, old men like wine because first of all, their bodies are cold, so it keeps you warmer. And also, wine is probably the only food that, it, as it gets older, it gets better. So, all the brothers came before Yosef after they buried their father, and they were afraid that Yosef now is going to take revenge. After Yaakov died, he's going to take revenge. So, Omar bin Yaman by Yafas, Omar Blaza, Hainu Damra Inchi, that's what people say, Ta'ala Bidena Sigidle. When the fox is ruling, bow down to him. So even though uh, they, they consider themselves superior to Yosef, they're older, they should, uh, but Yosef is the king. So they bow down to Yosef. So the Gemara says, Tala, a, a, a fox, my bitsurusim achve. How, what way is Yosef less than or inferior than his brothers? When was this statement say is by, by when Yaakov bowed to Yosef? Not when the brothers bow to Yosef. And Yaakov is certainly greater than Yosef. By Shtacha Yisrael, Roisha Mita, the Pasuk says when Yaakov asked Yosef to bury him, to, to be in charge of the burial, the Pasuk says that Yaakov, whose name is Yisrael, bowed at the head of the Mita. Amar Abin Yom Abay Yafes, Amar Ablaza, on this Pasuk, Tala Be'idana Sigidle, when the fox is ruling, um, you bow to him. 
And so that's what that was posted. Yosef had to calm his brothers down and saying, I'm not taking revenge, even though Yaakov died. What did he mean? He spoke on top of their hearts. He told them emotional words. If you have 10 smoky uh, lamps, they can't extinguish one lamp, right? This was this case. 10 of you could not extinguish me. I'm one lamp. How could I extinguish all of you? So certainly, even mathematically and logically, you can say it wouldn't make sense. One more line and then we'll stop. There's just so much to say. One of the Pasuk says, like, What does that mean? When the Jews finally were rejoicing, they had light, happiness, joy, and honor. They got back the idea to learn Torah because during the time of the Edict of Haman, they were, they were prohibited from engaging in learning Torah. Simcha Zayantav, they got they, they had happiness because now they can celebrate Yom and Toivim. The Khenuim of Samachta Bhagekha. Sosoin, they can express joy, Zumila, that is Mila. The Khenuimer Sois Anoichi Alimir Sacha. This Pasik refers to Mila, which was said by Bayoima Hashem al Abram. And Mila has is an expression of joy. The car, and they were allowed to wear tefillin, elu tefillin. That gives you the ultimate honor. And then the final thing is they were allowed to wear the tefillin. Beis Pashandosa and Aseris Bnei Homan. One last line. Omar Adab bin Yomer, Aseris Bnei Homan, but Aseris Sarach Laminrei Beneshima Achas. When you say the 10 sons of Homan, all at once, you have to say it in one breath. My timer, what's the reason? For some reason, Hashem made it there. They all, at one shot, all 10 children that were hung, even though they were hung probably at different times, they left their, their soul, left their bodies at the same time. I don't know what the point of that is, but there's some like clipper that had to leave at one time. One last line. My time kula bechad kifa is ka, is ta kifa. That you got to see the picture, and that's it. You see the vav of the word vaisasa. These are the ten children of Haman. You have to say it in one uh, expression. But the vav, when they write in the Megillah, that has to be lengthened to show that they were all put on one tree. They were all sons of Haman were hung on one big tree, one on uh, one on the bottom of each other, one uh, one on top of each other, and that's why you lengthen the vav to 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 maram is that, and that's how the Megillah has to be written. Kula is That's what that's what this whole thing teaches you. Very nice. Okay. Beautiful. Wow. Thank you. Baruch, one quick question. You yeah. said number 22 appears on a number of occasions. You're not sure why. Is it in a negative context, a positive context? or No, it, it, I, it, the number 22 appears that Yaakov left his fa father's house for 22 years. Okay. And the Chumash says that Yosef was kidnapped away from his father. He was 22 years. And now it says, and, and for some reason you need to know this number, the Chumara just said today that you should know that Haman was a barber for 22 years prior to him becoming uh, Haman. It's almost like you need to know Hitler was a, uh, an artist in Vienna prior to becoming uh, the uh, super, uh, you know, premier, the dictator, the Fuhrer. So why do I need to know the 22 years is important for this Gemara, that he was 22 years a barber? I, I just was wondering that. That's all. You want to do what, what again? The first one was which one? The tw I was the first one was ben Yaakov when when he stole the blessings from his brother Esav, he okay. was forced to run away from his home for twenty two years because Esav wanted to kill him. Right, and the second again, Yosef was kidnapped and sold yeah. by his brothers, and his mm -hmm. father had no idea where he was for twenty two years. Yes, 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 yes. And then, you know, the morale usually likes to make connections like these. Right, 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 right. So I don't know what the connection is. You'll figure it out. Eventually, you'll figure yes. it out. <laughs> okay. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. 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 Good night.